Hi, my name is Mallory Scherf, Registered Dietitian with Nutrition Specialist of Northeastern Oklahoma. And this is Beverly Prentice, and I'm with Nutrition Specialist of Northeastern Oklahoma, and I'm a registered dietitian. Today, Mallory and I are going to show you necessary texture consistency modifications for individuals with difficulty with oral intake and how to keep them safe. basic rules that we need to understand when we're feeding individuals who have difficulty. Um, most of them will have an individualized mealtime assistance plan and that mealtime assistance plan will define two things. It will define the textures and the consistencies of the foods and liquids that they need modified for safe oral intake. And so I'm going to talk about that today and just, you know, give you a few uh, pointers generically, but your dietitian will give you the specifics in a mealtime assistance plan. So it starts with an individual who's coughing, choking, gagging, um, or maybe uh, missing teeth or has poor oral control, poor lip closure. And so we need to change the texture or the consistency of their food. And so we'll often send them for a modified barium swallow study with SLP. And from that, we will write a mealtime assistance plan. And the mealtime assistance plan defines two things very specifically. And it will define the textures, which is the size of the pieces that the person can safely eat. So it will basically say they're going to consume whole food, even skin on chicken, uh, not cut up. They're able to uh, have the motor skills to cut it up themselves, or we're going to chop it up, or we're going to dice it up, or grind it, or even possibly puree it for them. So those words will be either a pureed, which is a level one, it'll be a minced and ground, which is a level two, or it'll be cut up, uh, which is about like this, or it will be chopped, or then whole is no modification. So a lot of times I just use my finger right here and I say, okay, the esophagus is one inch. And so if I'm going to go a half inch uh, cut up, then I'm going to be half. And so chances are that'll make it through the esophagus, or I'm going to be a fourth inch, or I'm going to be minced, or I'm going to be pureed. So this is the size of the pieces that that individual is able to safely either feed themselves or be fed by staff. The other thing we talk about is the way the food moves and feels in their mouth. And so that's consistency. And so when we use words like no dual consistencies, we mean no liquid broth with noodles like chicken noodle soup unless you've put crackers or cornbread in that so it moves like one consistency. It'll all move at the same time. When we say moist and cohesive, what we mean by that is if it's going to crumble individually and not go down as one moist cohesive ball, that's a problem. But if it will go like this, not fall off, not crumble, then it is moist and cohesive enough to make it safely in one swallow. So basically we have an esophagus and then we have an airway. And so we want the food to go down the esophagus. We do not want it in the airway. We do not want it lodged, for example, a whole banana or a whole grape like that. How would that look against the esophagus? that could actually be a choking hazard, even though it's a soft food. So we have to modify it for that individual to swallow it safely. So a whole apple is okay for some people, but the peel would be difficult for others. Raw carrots would be difficult if you were indentulous, for example. So that would have to be cooked to be soft. And celery strings, it's very stringy. Some of our individuals have problems with that. So they can't eat the skin of meat, they can't eat the skin of fruit, they can't eat some raw vegetables, including slaw. So 
these are too big of pieces for some people. If people don't have teeth, for example, they would have difficulty with that. And then uh, another thing that we really, really need to be aware of is the stickiness of a food. So no dual consistencies for our people with challenges and nothing that sticks to the back of a spoon. So no unmodified peanut butter. So if a person has challenges, uh, we will put that in their MAP and we will tell you, for example, uh, that no sticky foods, we will say, no dual consistency, we will say words like moist and cohesive, and then we will tell you if the food needs to be cut up or ground and the actual size of the pieces. Uh, the other thing that we will often say is no nuts and seeds. So uh, nuts and seeds kind of again have a tendency to just fall apart and not wad up in one cohesive bolus so they individuals with difficulty can't control where that's going. So we want the food to be moist and cohesive for individuals who have uh, swallowing difficulties. Um, one thing that will be defined in their MAP will be um, the liquids and whether or not they can have thin liquids as tolerated uh, in unregulated amounts. In other words, can they drink from an open cup or are they fed by staff from an open cup? We usually want the cup to either go below their nose or above their nose because we don't want the rim of the cup bumping their nose and having a head tilt. So usually it'll be a open rimmed or a small rimmed uh, cup. Sometimes it'll be even a squeeze bottle or if we have a straw, it's usually going to be a small diameter bent uh, straw that we can regulate the flow. And then if it moves too fast, too quickly, we're going to order a thickener and it will be either a gel based or it'll be a liquid thickener. And then once the liquids are thickened, there's three terms that we use to define those. So you need to look for those. Um, and that will be nectar thickened. So nectar thickened kind of looks like this. So it runs like nectar or runs like tomato juice. That's what it looks like. It's just got a little bit of thickener in it. So it's got one pump if you're using the gel based and it's got one scoop if you're using the powder. If it says honey consistency, well honey consistency actually uh, moves like honey. And so I'm going to show you what that would look like in a cup. I think I am. Okay, so this would move like honey. Do you see how that's moving? Moving about like honey or, you know, you know what honey looks like if you pour it. This liquid is going to pour the same. I'm probably going to be nice and not have Mallory drink that today. But then there's one more um, amount of thickener that's necessary for some people and it is it is pudding consistency. So do you see how that's pudding consistency? And so that's going to look like this. It's going to plop like pudding. And that gives the individual more time to control where that liquid's going so that it's not going into their lungs. So you're actually going to have thin liquids as tolerated, defined in your MAP, or you're going to have nectar thickened, you're going to have honey thickened, or pudding consistency. And so that's kind of the rules for setting up mealtime. You will have an individualized diet order that'll say basically you're on an anti-inflammatory diet, you're gonna eat this many vegetables, this many fruits, um, and then it will define the textures and consistencies. Now. Mallory's been sitting here nice and quiet. If you will notice, uh, Mallory is sitting upright. And so she is sitting with her head center aligned and a chin tuck. So her hips are at 90 degrees. Her knees are at 90 degrees. Her feet are at 90 degrees. So that's very important for her to have her airway protected and closed during oral intake. Now, Mallory, can feed herself obviously, um, but some of our individuals can't. Mallory is sitting here with a built up handle fork and uh, you can actually um, sometimes order those or even just uh, an insulation sleeve from Lowe's cut off and put on normal utensils works great. And so this would be if Mallory has difficulty uh, holding the utensil and she's going to feed herself. Uh, if Mallory's right-handed, we have even a built-up spoon that Mallory can use that's actually bent toward her uh, face. 
If I am staff and I am feeding Mallory, the most important thing is that I am sitting down on Mallory's level. So if I'm staff, I don't want to feed Mallory from up here because Mallory will tip her head to wherever I am. She will turn to wherever I am. So I don't want to give her medications or I don't want to do assisted feeding, which is feeding Mallory from a standing position. I want to come over here and I want to sit within 36 inches of Mallory. I want her head center aligned with that chin tuck and I don't want a utensil like this that's deep. I want a shallow utensil and I'm going to go straight into her mouth. I'm going to go on the top of her tongue and then straight out. It doesn't take much lip closure for a shallow bold utensil. If Mallory eats too much, too fast, or has choking difficulty, I'm gonna drop down to utensil size. So, this is not safe for most of our people. This is safe for most individuals with difficulty. This is required for some people to stay safe. If Mallory is feeding herself and she is eating too much too fast, I'm going to give her verbal cues to slow down or I'm going to touch her hand and have her put her utensil down. If she continues to gobble food and it's not safe, I will move the plate away from her until Mallory slows down and swallows. Okay, so what I'm looking for is to see if Mallory's Adam's apple is going up and down without difficulty. If the Adam's apple is not uh, moving up and down, I will use an empty spoon presentation to her lips to get her to swallow again. Then I will ask Mallory to take a drink or I will give Mallory a drink. And again, I wanna keep that head center aligned, slight chin tuck, and I wanna bring it to her lips. And then I'm watching for the rise and fall of the Adam's apple. So it's kind of like we wet the whistle, we give her food, we wet the whistle. So um, we're basically alternating drinks and bites uh, every couple of bites. And again, we've already modified the textures, we've already modified the consistencies. If she needed thickened liquids, I'm giving her thickened liquids. I'm giving her liquids all day long in the amount of half her body weight times ounces. When I give her food or medication, I do not want her reclining. I do not want her turning her head. I don't want her head tilted back. I want her in this 90, 90, 90 safe position. And again, if the foods are sticky, they're going to have to be modified. If they're slick, like peaches or pears and heavy syrup, mandarin oranges, we prefer that you buy those in a water pack or in juice. If they're in heavy syrup, you're going to have to drain that, blot that, and then give that to your patient. So um, Mallory, if she was having difficulty, what would you be doing, Mallory? Um, I would be choking <coughs> or coughing, <coughs> um, or I could be um, gagging. Even, like, gagging, or my eyes would be watering, anything like, like that. If she suddenly got tired and slumped, I would be, uh, I would know she had aspirated. Even if she started drooling, I would know that she was having difficulty. Uh, some of our patients have aerophagia, so they swallow um, air, a lot of air, and they have a high pa palate, and so then they'll start hiccuping or burping. So if Mallory started to rub right here, I would know she might be having reflux. So I've got my eyes on Mallory. I'm watching the rise and fall of her Adam's apple. I'm at a controlled pace so that she's able to swallow. If she has a delayed swallow, I'm waiting for the Adam's apple before I give them her another uh, bite. I'm giving her an empty spoon or a drink so that she's eating safely and can uh, maintain nutrition and hydration orally. Um, obviously, a few of our patients have to have feeding tubes, but we want the patient to be able to, number one, feed themselves, if at all possible, to maintain their ind uh, independence. And so we want Mallory to feed herself if she can because she's timing her breathing and her swallow. If I'm feeding her what's called assisted feeding, I am responsible for making sure she's swallowing safely. I've got eyes on her. She's able to breathe and to swallow. 
Otherwise, if she chokes, I'm going to have to do the Heimlich. I'm going to have to dislodge it. I only have minutes before she could die. So feeding is a time to be serious, to understand the challenges that our individuals face and to modify the food appropriately. And most importantly, to keep her in a safe position and to have eyes on, be attentive, and then write down any signs of difficulty that she's having so that it can be evaluated and reviewed to see if changes need to be made in her mealtime plan.